Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can create five unique hover effects specifically for a summary block in your Squarespace website. Now, summary blocks pull content from collection pages, be it a blog or a store or a video collection, all kinds of cool stuff. If you're brand new to summary blocks, check out the related videos linked in the description below. I have an overview that will teach you exactly how to use them. But in this video, we're going to create some really cool hover effects so the content of the summary blocks will stand out. Let's hop on into my demo site and take a look. So here we are in my demo site, and I am using version 7.1, but these codes will work for any version of Squarespace that has a summary block. Now to be super clear, these summary blocks can pull data from collection pages, be it a blog, an event, a store, or a video page, or a video list, I should say, but not a portfolio. And then there are four different types, wall, carousel, list, and grid. For a full overview of these summary block options, check out the related videos linked below. But these codes right here are what we're going to use to create some hover effects. So here on this page, I have a blog wall summary, an event carousel summary, a product list, and a video grid. All four options and four types of collection pages. And these codes are gonna work for any of those. So let's go ahead and hop into design and scroll down to custom CSS. This first one is going to take that summary thumbnail and make it grayscale on a hover. So I'm gonna copy this code, paste it right here, and let's scroll down and see. When I hover over an item, it turns the image grayscale. See how this is working for every single one of those? I guess those are bad pictures for products to explain that, but it's working, I promise. Now we can have this work in the opposite direction too, where it's grayscale and then goes full color on a hover. I'm gonna copy the same code and paste it here. And I'm gonna remove the word hover from the first part of the code. And I'm gonna change this to zero and I'll add exclamation point important so the browser pays attention to my code. So what this says is take a summary item and the thumbnail for that summary item, give it a grayscale filter. However, when I hover over that summary item, take that same summary thumbnail and make that filter go away. So check it out. Now we get full color image on a hover. We'll scroll up. Again, it's kind of hard to see with the product because the image is there that, uh, take a look at that zipper and that hook right there. It's slightly different colored. All right, let's take a look at the events. There we go. And at the actual wall summary here for the blog post. Now, if you want that to be a little bit smoother, you can also add a transition. I'll say transition spelled correctly. Let's go two seconds and we'll put that in both directions. So it takes a second to load and now It'll go full color a little bit slower than it did before, and it'll take a little while to go back to grayscale, about two seconds. You can increase or decrease that number to make the transition faster or slower, or just remove it completely and it will be instant. So again, we'll just remove it to the code we had before, and it'll happen in just an instant, as soon as I hover over it, okay? Cool, let's take a look at some of these other options. This option right here will give it a border on a hover, so I'll replace all of my code with this one. Let's remove that extra symbol I had there for some reason. And now we'll see we get a border as soon as we hover over it. You'll notice the content shifts a little bit. Everything will shift by one pixel to make room for that border. Now the carousel gets cut off a little bit because we're adding one extra pixel that's gonna go beyond the edge of the carousel. So be really careful with this one. It will work for all of these items, but again, carousel is gonna get cut off just a little bit because of how wide the image is stretched in the particular carousel layout. But all other summary items will just shift the content slightly to fit that one extra pixel around each part of the edge there. Now we can also adjust the font. This code right here will make the font bold as soon as we hover over the item. So let's paste it in custom CSS and check it out. When I hover over it, it's really obvious that's the content I'm about to click on. We'll take a look at event, pretty obvious. Same for product and for our video grid. Again, this works for any type of summary block. Now scrolling back up, we've got two more codes because I just realized this one right here is a duplicate. I promised you five, not six. So let's go ahead and remove that one and we'll do shadow and darker shadow, okay? I'll select save, we'll go back to what we were working with. Now this one will create a box shadow underneath the actual item on a hover. So I'll paste that code right here and let's scroll down. See how it helps the content stand out just a little bit. Again, this will work for any type of summary block. We've got products here and then the video grid as well. 
and it gives us just a little bit of a box shadow on a hover. Now you can change any part of this box shadow if you want it to be more dramatic, pull it more to the right, or maybe make it even bigger, pull it down to the bottom a bit more. Lots of options there. Get really creative with your box shadow code. The final one that I coded for us here, the fifth one, will give a summary item a shadow, and then when we hover on it, it gets a little bit darker, so it looks like it raises even more. So this says, take your summary item and give it this particular box shadow, but on a hover, give it this box shadow. And let's take a look at that. See how it stands out just a little bit more on a hover? Pretty cool, right? Again, super customizable there. The important part to know about all of these codes is the summary item hover. This is when you're hovering over any part of that individual item. The first one changes the images to grayscale. The second one gives it a border. The third one makes all of the font for that summary item bold. This one will give it a box shadow. And then this one will give it a shadow that then turns darker on a hover. All of these are listed in the description below, but when you're done, just select save and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial and all five of those options are listed in the description below. And again, this is for a standard summary block. So no matter what type of collection page you're working with, those codes will be able to customize the summary block style for that specific collection that you've selected. Alrighty, I'll let you get to it. If you liked this video, give me a like and a comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial about Squarespace every single week. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, Importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.